This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Hello there. I am Janice, and I am the presenter of the group Amazing from IE2-1. I am here to present to you about the 11 facts about Jose Pilaro. Just watch and learn. Enjoy! 1. The P in his name is a tribute to Jose Rizal's brother. Contrary to popular belief, the P is not really Laurel's middle name. Born Jose Paciano Garcia Laurel, his second name was given to him by his parents as a tribute to Paciano, Jose Rizal's older brother who served as a general during the Philippine Revolution. Laurel's father, Don Sotero, himself served as secretary to the interior under Emilio Wagenaldo's revolutionary cabinet and was also a signatory to the Malolos Constitution. Two. He often clashed with the American Governor General. During his service as Secretary of the Interior under Governor General Leonard Wood, Laurel's high-spirited nationalism often clashed with that of Wood who many Filipinos viewed as unsympathetic to the cause of freedom. Laurel also single-handedly caused a cabinet crisis in 1923 when his resignation sparked his fellow Filipinos to also resign from their positions. Laurel's resignation was a form of protest against Wood for reinstating an American police he had previously suspended for being corrupt. 3. He is the only president to have served in all three branches of government. No other Filipino president apart from Laurel can claim to have worked in the executive, legislative and judicial branches of government. Besides being a president, he had also been a senator and an associate justice. Aside from that, he also served in numerous government and cabinet, and elected posts during his long and illustrious career. 4. He was a reluctant collaborator. Perhaps the biggest myth that needs to be dispelled is the notion that Laurel had been a willing collaborator with the Japanese. True, he liked to criticize the Americans and MacArthur hated him enough to detain him upon his return. However, in reality it was his boss Manuel Quezon who ordered him to stay because someone will have to meet the Japanese. In this case, Laurel was the perfect man to soften the blow of enemy occupation, having received an honorary law degree at Tokyo University. 5. Jose Laurel survived three gunshot wounds. Besides surviving being beaten up with a cane sometime in his youth, Laurel also survived three bullet wounds while playing golf at Wack Wack Golf Course in Mandalayan on June 5. 1943, the two of them nearly hitting his heart and liver. 6. He turned Malacca and Yang Palace into a Filipino fortress. Although he was a puppet in the hands of the Japanese authorities, Laurel made sure that Malacca and Yang Palace would remain firmly all Filipino. He posted Filipino sentries, turned a blind eye to the subversive activities of his subordinates, and was even said to have secretly provided refuge to insurgents. His German office was also marked with transparency and austerity as Laurel did his best to empathize with the people as suffering, methods which included eating only root crops and vegetables. 7. He saved Manuel Rojas' life twice. Laurel would also be instrumental in saving Manuel Rose's life not just once but twice. 
The first occurred in 1942 when Laurel successfully convinced General Masahar Hama to have Rojas then languishing in a Mindanao prison camp, released. Unfortunately, Laurel could not save Jose Abad Santos whom the Japanese hated for not cooperating with them. The second occurred in 1944 when Colonel Akira Nagahama of the dreaded Kempetai, a secret police, came to Laurel's office in Malacanang and demanded he hand over Rojas. 8. He also saved an aide from the Japanese. Aside from Rojas, Laurel also saved the life of his aide camp major Jesus Vargas from the Kempetai. Laurel instructed Vargas to tell the Japanese by phone that he could not accept their invitation. Afterwards, he placed a hundred of his guards around the palace and told them to shoot any Japanese who wanted to enter. They never came. 9. He refused to draft a single Filipino into the Japanese military. Although we already know that he declared martial law and war against America and the UK in September 1944, it is interesting to note that Laurel did so only under threat of death by Japanese authorities. Previously, he had resisted several times to declare war on the US, reasoning that no Filipino would follow him anymore and that it would tarnish their image internationally if they fought against their erstwhile allies. When he finally did acquiesce to their demands, he did not even actually declare an active war, but made a passive fact instead, saying that a state of war exists between the Philippines and the US. Ten. The judge trying his treason case resigned to defend him instead. After the war, clamor for Laurel now in prison to be exonerated ran so high that one judge actually resigned from the court set up to try collaborators to become chief of his defense counsel instead. Laurel himself proclaimed his innocence in court with a fiery speech stating he was neither pro-Japanese nor pro-American but pro-Filipino and that he was satisfied to have answered his country's goal of duty when it needed him most. The last but not the least. Number 11. He ran for senator one last time and he won. Although the amnesty somewhat denied him a chance to prove his innocence, Laurel would later achieve his personal vindication when he made a last Senate run in 1951. During that race, he garnered the highest number of votes among the candidates. After serving his term, he retired from public office and dedicated his time to his family-owned Lyceum of the Philippines, although he continued to be revered as a statesman up until his untimely death from cerebral hemorrhage on November 6, 1959. In keeping with his wishes, he was given no eulogy during his funeral. That's all. I hope you learned something. Once again, I am Janice. Thank you for watching.